Today we're going to be learning how to make fry bread. If you don't know what fry bread is, it's a Native American delicacy that is super ono, super yummy, and if you haven't tried it before, hopefully you can make this at home with your ohana and share it with them. Promise it won't disappoint. Two different popular versions of fry bread. Uh, it's the same type of bread, same type of frying, but you can eat it either as a dessert or as an actual meal. Basically just when you make the fried bread and you top it with fried beans, lettuce, tomatoes, basically like a taco. Um, and it's super yummy, super filling. And then the other way to eat it as a dessert is when you put honey and powdered sugar on it. And that's the way I prefer it. It's definitely a yummy treat, especially after a long day of work. It's kind of easy to make, doesn't take a lot of ingredients. Usually you have it in the home already. This recipe calls for four cups of flour. And luckily they sell these cute little bags at most markets that have 32 ounces in it. There's about eight ounces in a cup. So 32 divided by eight is four, which is exactly what we need. So buy one of those if you're just gonna make it one time and you don't really need flour in the house. And then baking powder, it calls for three teaspoons and salt calls for three teaspoons as well. And then I washed my hands already before touching all of these things. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it with my hands. After you've mixed all the dry ingredients pretty well, you can go ahead and start adding the water. It calls for two to three cups of water. The water has to be warm. So make sure that you guys are only using your left knob to turn the water on, get it really as hot as you can. And that's supposed to help with the consistency of the dough. You want the dough to be really soft and loose. And I'm not gonna just pour the water in all three cups at once. I'm gonna take it slow. And then also, if you look into the pot, um, make a little well to put the water in. The water is warm enough. It calls for two to three cups, so I'm just gonna start with one cup in. And then I'm going to fill my second cup, but maybe only use half. And then I'm just going to put that on the side and start mixing. Whoops. Kind of when you're mixing everything, I know I went straight in and grabbed it, but you really want to be scooping from the sides and pushing things in. As you can see, still lots of flour so we're gonna go ahead and add that second cup of water in there I think that will be what's needed for the whole recipe you might even need more water than this and then as you can see very crumbly so just really need that bread flour flying everywhere so I think we need even more water so that's why I said two to three cups Pretty sure it's gonna need the full three, but Tutu Lady says just add it in slowly. Um, if you add too much water, you can always just add a bit more flour. I don't think it will really mess up the dough if you add a little bit more. Um, it's okay if it's a little bit sticky. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water. Just a little bit. They say to just keep kneading it. Kneading. Kneading it. Um... I was told if it's a little bit too wet, you can sprinkle or razzle dazzle some flour onto it. I didn't add the whole three cups in, I still have about half of the third cup left. Oh, uh, see, adding flour did help a little bit, as you can see. And then, super important, you want to be scooping from the sides. 
If you have made fry bread before, or maybe your grandparent made it, maybe your parents still make it, or your aunt or your uncle, uh, don't be afraid to drop in the comments how your family makes it. Because remember, not all knowledge is going to one place. Yeah. See, when the tutu lady showed me how to make this, it's like, it kind of shifted apart slowly, but it was still very smooth and slow. So I think I just need to need it some more. It's the first time I'm making this, so I want it to be good. If it's good, I'm going to take it to my mom, make her proud of me. I'm going to add the rest of the water. Let's hope that was the right decision. Doesn't sound like it was. But you know what? We're still going to go for it. We don't want it tough. We want it soft and loose. Like me. Babe, you're the most beautiful person in the world. Yeah, but I'm soft. And so I'm going to go ahead... This is what we got here. As you can see, it's drooping down a little bit from my hand. Kind of like my eyebrow or my eyelid. <laughs> I kind of made it do that, but you get the you get the point. <laughs> the next step is to let it rise for 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna go with 30. Look at my beautiful creation. AKA Cleely Jr. And so we need to cover it with a cloth. This is my nice new cute green cloth. And you cover it. And now you can start the timer. And wait 30 minutes. So next, what we're going to want to do is make them into little balls. You're going to actually let them sit for another 15 minutes. So I'm just going to show you what size ball you want to make. Oh, this dough feels super nice and soft. It's a little bit sticky, but definitely what Tutu Lady said it should look like. Nice and stretchy. And so... They said like palm size, so. so it should stretch. If it breaks, I think that's what it means to like be too needed. So you can roll it up. And then yeah. And you're gonna let it rise for another 15, 20 minutes. Okay, as you can see here, I got about the last of the dough. Big close up. We have our little dough balls that we're gonna let rise. This one's a little bit smaller. And yeah, the last of our dough. So again, you're gonna grab your napkin or your cloth towel, I'm sorry. Grab your cloth towel and just cover it for about another 10, 15 minutes. And there you go. Now that we've let our bread rest for a little bit, let it take a little nappy nap, we are going to do the funnest part of this activity, which is frying the fried bread. So I'm most nervous about this part because I almost burned our house down when I was in middle school because I tried to make my own french fries with oil and I didn't know you're not supposed to add water to oil that has caught on fire. And that's exactly what I did. So be very careful when you do this. We're gonna use a medium to high heat. Put that in there and, and it doesn't look like it's gonna catch on fire. Maybe it is. I'm a little lower. Okay, I made it a bit lower. So as you can see here, close up babe. It's melting quite nicely. Um, that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna have to add a little bit more shortening in there because you want it to be about two inches thick. 
You really got to give it room for the bread to fit in there and start frying. You know, spread it out like this in a circular motion, kind of like a pizza. And we're, these might be really big. Um, yeah. So after you make it about the size of your hand, you see, that's nice and stretchy. So, and you can see there's no clumps in it anymore. That's exactly what we wanted. So after you expand your circle a little bit, slap it between your hands. I don't know what this does either. Um, it was just a helpful tip from 123 Lady. Okay, I think this is stretched out pretty good. Um, it might look a little bit big, too big for the pan, but it's not. You want to make it nice and big because she's going to shrivel. And then before you put this into the fryer, yeah, that'll fit in there nice and good. Before you put this into the fryer, you want to make a hole in the middle. And this Indian uncle said that we make a hole in the middle because only God can make perfect things. And I think that's just a little saying that there is because fry bread is perfect. <laughs> Only God can make perfect things. Okay, so I got my hole in the middle and she's ready to go in. You guys ready for this? Babe, close up. And action. Oh my god. Woo! Is it gonna burn? Should I put it lower? Mm, it's gotta do that. Just put stuff in. How long do you put it in there for? How long do you cook it? Okay. So I'm just going to lower this a little bit because I don't think it needs to be simmering that much. So tip number one, push down the fry bread into the oil because she's going to bounce up for sure. And you'll know when to flip it because it'll start browning on the edges, babe, close up. So you can see a little bit of brown on this area um but you want to see brown all around and that will be like your indicator okay time to flip um if you have tongs or the little steak fork poker thingy use that to stick it and use it this might be harder with the spatula mm, smelling like fried bread um yeah it's a true delicacy and for someone like me who doesn't eat it except at the powwow and maybe most people i don't know it can be a tedious thing to make. Okay, I see a browning, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip her. Ooh, Jesus, I'm so scared. Um, that looks kind of burnt in my opinion. Hey, right, that is good. Um, but we're gonna try again. So, it's gonna take practice, but We'll come back when we have our final product. Okay, so we finished cooking all of our fry bread. As you can see here, it's beautiful. Um, best delicacy there is around. Close up, close up. Model, model. Fry bread, fry bread. Like I said before, there are two popular ways to enjoy fried bread. One is the taco version where you use refried beans as well as diced tomatoes, cheese, and lettuce. Uh, the other way is as a dessert with powdered sugar and honey. Powdered sugar could get a little bit messy and I personally don't always use it. So I just like to stick with my go-to honey. And we're going to try it, me and my husband. Is it just like at the powwow? It's better than powwow. <gasps> Coming from me, bro. Yummy. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to top it off with this delicious honey. Again, you can add powdered sugar or do the taco version. Or maybe you want to try something new. This is the ultimate test. And 
And with COVID-19, I know some of you suckers be buying up all the flour. So just buy some baking powder and some salt while you're at it. Quick, easy, affordable meals, especially during this time. Okay, that's all for today, folks.